procedural content, more and more games are being built in worlds that developers created the means to exist but didn't actually entirely build themselves. It's actually pretty amazing to think that a game like No Man's Sky is based in a universe built on math. And while there is an artistic element, they still have to make assets. It's really actually pretty amazing. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today GameRanks wants to ask, how does procedural content work in video games? So you've watched videos of No Man's Sky, or perhaps one of the many other games that's using procedurally generated landscapes and worlds in an ever-increasing fashion in video games. But just as a heads up, I'm probably going to reference No Man's Sky a lot on account this is pretty much the procedural game at the moment. And you may not think about it, but that virtual world was created in a fashion that can actually be a little bit closer compared to how the universe actually happened. Various criteria exist exist within math, traits and formations and types of landscape are expressed over time. Now that's not to say that there was a big bang in No Man's Sky and everything evolved from there, but it's just not possible for somebody to create 18 bajillion gajillion planets or however many there are. It would take a lifetime to explore a small portion of those planets, so thinking one might be able to create them would be silly. It's too big a task. But what you may not know is that procedural content generation relies heavily on the concept of random noise. But what is random noise? Well, it's explainable with math, but I'm not going to do that to you. I do have a heart. Basically, random noise is a function delivering a random number between minus one and one, which could mean anything from x and y axis to just two other variables, which if you were to visualize would just look like film grain or utterly random dots all over a picture. That noise is then applied in various ways. Either you do visualize it into a picture, like I said, and that picture could be interpreted in any number of ways, either as a bump map, as a texture, really there's no specific way that could be used. Or you could take the values generated and place them into another function. basically taking the numbers that it generated and running them through another math problem. Which might sound weird and complex, but let's think about this. We are kind of talking about building a world with math. Right? Now, back when there was much less storage and RAM in computers, these methods were used to create large but rather simplistic worlds for players to occupy in games on account you truly just couldn't store a large world, especially something as detailed and realistic as something you'd see in a game today. That's why a lot of space games and also older games like The Elder Scrolls used procedurally generated worlds. But in today's gaming, it's obviously not used for technical limitations. For instance, No Man's Sky uses procedural generation like I said a moment ago because it's impossible to even see everything in it. Can you imagine designing everything in it? That being said, they do actually have to design some degree of the assets in the game, but even that ends up being changed by math functions. Artists create various versions of an asset for No Man's Sky, and various math takes parts of each and creates many new ones, thus creating unique species on the different planets. This is accomplished by making various pieces of the assets into kind of their own assets and using those random noise functions, expressing various sub-assets to create a full asset, which then finally creates a unique procedurally generated thing. If you take those concepts and apply them to whatever scale you need, you can eventually come out with an alien giraffe or a weird tree or a mountain or clouds, or islands, or ships, or houses, or buildings, or urban landscapes. Essentially, if you end up putting the time into the creation of enough assets that can mathematically be combined, you can end up with so much more than simply building a world. That's in part why procedural generation is being used more and more. We're expecting larger and larger worlds from video games. And as we expect more, we definitely want to be able to accomplish accommodate that. Where it used to be for memory purposes, now it's because the human life doesn't have enough time in it to develop the size game that we kind of have in mind as a goal. The start point for the mathematical equation is known as the seed. If you input a different seed, you get a different result. Some games allow you to input
input your own seeds, some don't. For instance, Minecraft allows you to input a seed, which then procedurally generates a world. You can always come out with that same result by inputting that seed, because although the equations exist to randomize things, they also respond the same way every time. It's possible to set it up so that it works a different way than that, but generally, it's not. Some mild degree of predictability is generally looked at as a good thing. No Man's Sky doesn't allow you to input seeds on account each and every planet is its own unique seed, and the universe is made up of all these unique planets. Part of the cool thing about that, in my opinion, is that it forces you not to go to familiar things. If you want to see a new planet, you can't really just Google the type of seed that you want and generate it. In essence, this kind of makes it work more like real life in that the universe is vast and filled with stuff that you just never expect. And that's the point. The point is that if you want to see the planet that you saw in that YouTube video, you have to travel to it. And that journey, in effect, is the game itself. But it all comes down to math. To sum up, artists build assets. Those assets are broken down into sub-assets. Mathematical routines are created to combine those assets into unique objects, and random noise is applied to functional routines that tell the computer how to do this. Seeds are a start point number that provide those mathematical equations a basis for them to complete computations on. The result can be as big or as small as a developer wants it to be. So it's not entirely random. There are artists involved and they do work that definitely has an effect on how good the world comes out. So don't automatically just be dismissive of a procedurally generated environment because a lot of work did actually go into it. It's just they're doing that kind of work now because it's not possible for humans to make the size world that a lot of people want from a game now. When the No Man's Sky developers said there's 18 kajillion bajillion bajillion Jillion worlds, all of which are unique, people were kind of like, yeah, I do want to try that. And while it is possible that No Man's Sky could end up being a disaster, it does look like it's probably a good game. And like I said at the beginning of the video, we used it as a point of reference on a lot of these concepts because you're probably going to see an absolute shit ton of it, whether it is good or bad. So do you understand procedural content generation a little bit better? Do you want to talk about No Man's Sky or any other games you know about that use this method of content generation? Do you think somebody did it more effective or less effective than somebody else? The comment section is a very good place for that. We'd love to have a discussion with you. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.